Okay, folks, so we're continuing on with the idea of computing double integrals and their associated iterated integrals over arbitrary regions, which we're calling R. So um, what we want to focus on now is just the space in the xy plane, the region R. We'll worry about computing the integrals in a moment here. What I'd like to do is I'd like to define two different types, um, and this is common to some books, although not ours, to call uh, one collection of these regions type 1 and another collection of these regions type 2. And, uh, you know, this might be some general region like this. You know, we might have something really messy like this. But it turns out that every single one of these, uh, you know, this region, as long as it's formed by finitely many uh, curves, could be broken up into a bunch of either type 1 or type 2 regions. And so this actually is enough to do what we want to do. So what we want to focus on is what are we going to do if we're dealing with a type 1 region. So I'm going to describe these regions below. These are all type 1 regions. So what we see here is that notice that the, um, the left and right limits of integration are all defined uh, by some x coordinate here, whereas the upper and lower portions of this region in each one of these three examples are defined by some curve. So that could be maybe we've got, you know, in this first example, we've got, you know, a curve below and a curve above, but notice it picks up from some fixed x value and it ends at some fixed x value. Again, this might be where these two curves intersect, but because this intersection is just at some x point and then the end of the uh, region is given by some uh, x point b, Again, this this region is really just simply described by having a curve in terms of x and another curve uh, that's given in terms of x, so some function y equals h of x, some function y equals g of x, and we're not, we don't have, uh, we either have a straight line here or simply a point here for the left and right sides of this region. When that's the case, we're going to describe it as a type 1 region. So the way we can think about it then is that for the uh, when we think about the um, uh, the pictures of the, you know maybe we've got some sort of curve above here that, that's formed by our surface above here uh, we can go ahead and simply be adding up a bunch of um, uh, areas of cross-sectional areas but all of these run uh, you know this is for a fixed plane in the x direction here's a fixed plane in the x direction and so um, we'll simply be adding up a bunch of cross-sectional planes between x equals a and x equals b here. Folks, I realize that might still be a little bit confusing. We're going to deal with that more in class. But for right now, let's say, how do we integrate uh, a region that we describe as this type 1 region? The answer is, is rather than computing the double integral uh, over the region r for our function, f of x, y, dA, is we can go ahead and compute it this way. We're going to compute it from as an iterated integral from x equals a to x equals b, and then from uh, y equals the lower limb, the lower curve, so g of x, up to y equals the upper curve, h of x, of our f of x comma y, d what? Well, we're, the innermost integrals with respect to y, and then dx. And you don't need those parentheses there going forward, but it might be nice to jot them down now. So folks, here you can see, here's the picture of what I just described, and I really should have just jumped down to this picture sooner, uh, where you can see that, yeah, the, uh, the cross-sectional areas are just simply starting at x equals a. That's where we've got this first cross-sectional area that we compute. Uh, so that inner one would be we'd be computing the integral of f of x y um, uh, dy, and we're doing that from the lower curve, which is y equals g of x, all the way up to the upper curve, um, uh, y equals uh, f of x. And so we think of this as we're fixing, you know, if we're just doing this first uh, for this first region right here. Well, that happens when x equals a. But then what would we do? Well, we'd compute it then for you know some other uh, x value. So maybe this is the x you know this is this is maybe x equals two or something like that. Well, okay, we would add up this area to it as well, and then we're going to sum up a bunch of cross-sectional areas of this arbitrary thin width, and that's going to give us the volume here. But again, the key thing is is that the upper and lower limits of integration here are not numbers like they were in our first iterated integrals, but they are curves uh, where we think of y as a function of x.
So in this example here, we're going to take, we don't, I, I'm not worried about computing the integral. We'll do that in class. Um, but we're going to take some uh, continuous function, f of x, y, and I just want you to set up the appropriate integral first as a double integral and then as an iterated integral, considering this as a what type of region? Well, we think of the upper, you know, this, is, this looks like this type 1. In fact, it's this uh, type 1 example right here. Um, and so, again, I think it's going to be very helpful to think about how you're going to be slicing this. Each one of these slices that I'm drawing, you should think of as one of these cross-sectional areas uh, where there's the slice that I just drew, uh, and then you think of a cross-sectional area sitting above that. Okay, so setting up first the uh, double integral, which really isn't any new work. This is the double integral over the region, region R of f of x, y. That's the double integral. I just want us to keep practicing thinking of this as a double integral problem. But then we can go ahead and evaluate this as the iterated integral between, um, well, between which x values? This is going to be from, I can see certainly it's going to go from x equals something to x equals 4. We actually need to find this coordinate right here, so let's go find that. That happens where the curve y equals uh, 2x plus 24, I know that's a line, but let's call it a curve, intersects the curve y equals 2x squared. So if we set these two equal to each other, we've got 2x squared is equal to 2x plus 24 or 2x squared minus 2x minus 24 needs to equal 0, or 2 times x squared minus x minus 12 needs to equal 0. So this happens at, if we continue factoring this, this would be x minus 4. We already knew that x equals 4 was an endpoint. And then x plus uh, 3 equals 0. So that's at x equals negative 3. So that's the order pair, negative 3 comma. And then if we plug that in, negative 6, I think that's 18. But the point is, is that we're going to start drawing these cross-sectional slices, they start at x equals negative 3, and they stop here at x equals 4. So they started at x equals negative 3, they stopped at x equals 4. Okay. And then this is the new material. Inside of this integral that we're taking with respect to x, we're going to have the integral from y equals the lower curve, and the lower curve is 2x squared, up to y equals the upper curve, which is 2x plus 24 for whatever this function is. Again, so we're not worried about computing this right now. We're just concerned with setting up this integral as its appropriate inter iterated integral. And the thing is, is that since I'm thinking of my cross-sectional areas as running vertically as opposed to horizontally, this was a type 1 region.